That's an easy one. Rennie? Rennie. Yeah, how many? Over 60, 60 I think. 67, I think. Yeah. Wow. Trevor, how many are you at? Aren't you at? This is my 32nd. Oh, double. This was my 16th. But I did three months straight. Yeah, I've done 57 days straight. Not quite three months. How'd that go? It's tiring. Yeah. Yeah, you just get worn out mentally. Yeah, ah. not on the Nautilus though. I've done 120 days, like, that was tough. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was during COVID, so we're kind Zoom of stuck. Zoom in, please. Oh. Yeah. Which ship was that on? Uh, um, Zoom in. Um, yeah, thank you. Sorry, I got a bit of an issue going okay. on. Let me try yeah, to right remember. Here. It's um, it's a Chevron project. I'm trying to remember the like name of it. It looks like the so at the of sea. How many days, Elias? Nice. 120. Wow. Yeah. Thank I did, you very much. I did a 67 day Thank cruise you. on the drill ship. Yeah, like it was. <laughs> on a real Calabria. ship? On the drill ship, yeah. Drill ship, yeah. What's a drill ship? Uh, Just for practicing. <laughs> the Joyce <laughs> Resolution. It's a dedicated drill ship that's now going into uh, retirement shortly part of the International Ocean Discovery Program. They typically do two months at a time. And unlike here, they do 12 hour shifts. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Which I'm used to like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. But this is this the is only operation I've ever worked at those four I Yeah, off. like. What do you what do you guys yeah. like better though? Twelve, twelve for sure. Yeah, I, I really? like yeah I like the twelve. Yeah, yeah you get a full night's sleep. Exactly. Yeah, you sure, don't have to prepare yeah. yourself for two shifts, so you do half the number of shifts. And sure, they're longer, obviously. Yeah, but I prefer it honestly. For the ROV team, if there's two seats, there's three people. So instead of sitting here for four hours, I can sit here for two, or one, or three, or whatever. And, you know, you start getting a little. Um, brain dead after a while. I do anyway. And uh, you can trade out. You know, I have to go to the bathroom or I'm just, I'm not hitting my Zooms today. I'm not in the right mental state. Someone else tag in for a minute and you come back in later. Yeah. You can have meal relief. It's uh, it's very nice. Yeah. yeah. And on the drill ship, they have meals at 6 and 12 all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have cookies at 9 and 3. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah mid rats are nice for that. Yep. Yeah, the ship I was on uh, did 12-hour uh, shifts and had four meals a day, mm -hmm. four meal services. Yep. Gauge check finished. Roger. Two for each shift. Yeah. So even if you were, if you were sleeping, you know, if your if your watch ended at midnight uh, and you slept through breakfast, there's, you could still get three meals in that yeah. day. Yeah. Yep. So they usually yeah midnight food. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I wonder why Nautilus does the four hours. But that's like the traditional geophysics approach or Navy watches. Yeah. Well, but now hours? they have a funky European Navy watch schedule, which is like six, two, and four, or something like that. It's oh, the dog dog shift. I think it's called. Yeah. Or they okay. They slip every a couple hours every day. Yeah. Like, I like I like to get like six hours straight. Like you know. Once I have that, I'm good for the day. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. it's hard to do. <laughs> the worst shift I've seen is six on, six off. Oh, that is oh. the worst. Yeah, that's really tough. Sometimes when we're in the van, like, I forget if it's night or day. I think it's day right now. We it have these day, day right cams. Now, yeah. mm -hmm. No, I'm. Well, yeah, when we come out at 12, it's bright. Or dark, and you never really know what to expect. Yeah. I'm at 12 noon. Yeah. Um, You're like, it's van time now. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. It's 2013-38. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> UTC, van yeah. time. 10-13 local.
bonk. A little sea lily. Is that a sea lily? Looks like yeah. it. I thought, do they come in different colors? Yeah. Yeah, we, we have seen Procrimus ruberimus. Oh, oh no, it's, it's not a stock It has its witch fingers. Oh. Witch fingers, trick me. Oh yeah, it's Zoom holding, in, please. holding itself in the um, stock. Oh, and there's a snail shell. Yeah, and some spongy debris. Oh, snail. Cool. Thank you. asks, fish. why is there no fish visible at the moment? But there's, there's a fish, fish right there. At the moment. <laughs> 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 well, we always say Hercules is really loud, and we think that that probably scares off a lot of the bigger fish. Stephanie, what does Hercules sound like? <laughs> <laughs> Did I get it? Yeah. Right. What is um, making the noise? The hydraulic pump driven by the high voltage electric motor. Mm -hmm. This is a flat top, all right. Yeah, not much here. here. One less one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can explore around. You know. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> Flat top's pretty big on the map, right? Is this a big flat top? Yeah. yeah. It's huge. It's an elongated guillot. Mm -hmm. Elongated yes, eel? <laughs> guillot. <laughs> oh, guillot, sorry, I'm like looking around. What? <laughs> sorry. Aren't they all kind of elongated? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An elongated eel would be like really long. Or what if it's elongated the other way? Wide-wise? Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't it's that be a wide-gated? A wide-gated, yeah. Thickened beverage. Oh, not those again. <laughs> Thickened Thick like juice. a good juice. Good is sure a word you could use to describe it. Let's zoom on this thing, please. What are you? A Chrysogorgia. Oh, yes. All right, thank you. Ooh, yeah. As we come into our last couple minutes here, I'm just going to do a bit of cruising around, see what we see. Not much. Look at this tubulator. Yeah. Little ridge. Some solid lava tube. Look at that thing. That's yeah. a tube. That's really cool. It's even acting as a little uh, sediment dam thing. All right, I'm going to pull you yeah, for a sec here. Roger. Wh why is he called a tube log? It looks like a tube. <laughs> <laughs> I know why it's called a tube. Tell us. Say it. Okay. So the lava's flowing, mm -hmm, right? Well, and it along it flows along gates, and then it hardens over top, but then the lava's still flowing in that hardened tube inside. But th this is actually, I think, an intrusive dike. Okay. I with, tried. With some tube stuff, Does maybe. That's interesting. So it's not a tube? Yeah, I can't tell. But the, the, the way it's so linear... Ooh, zoom in here, please. It looks a lot more like mushroom. a dike. Is it a mushroom? Yes. Yeah. It's a mushroom coral. Was my explanation right, thank of you. tube? Probably yeah, you, you can see it. 
describe the tube appropriately. Well done, Steph. <laughs> I was learning yesterday. But this is very similar to that uh, dike feature we saw down in the saddle in our last dive. Yeah. I feel like this looks like the little rock walls you see all over Rhode yeah. Island. Yeah. <laughs> or Hadrian's Wall in uh, northern England. Ooh. You can keep your heading. Roger. That's I'm almost column or basalt, though. Almost? Almost. Now. Yeah, you can see that below that intrusive, there's like little, almost look like uh, column or basalt. Another one? What forms the these Which one? dike features? It was, it was a, uh, an intrusion. There's probably a crack, and the lavas came up along this crack. Wow, that's impressive. It was a great thing to end the dive on. Spongy debris, graveyard. Yeah, it all like congregates at the base of this wall. And yeah, you see the, the horizontal lines in that tube. That's almost like uh, column nervous jointing. I mean, we're always Perfect. used to seeing it vertical, the joints. And but nope. on these things, you know, don't see them horizontal. Coming up. That's it. Thanks Coming for the up. show. Thank you. Thanks, Guillot. That was a perfectly... What speed? We'll find out. Okay. I'm going to go full speed, and you can match for now. See how we go. Um, that was a perfectly angled feature to end on, because that set me directly up for recovery heading. Yay. Love that. All part of the plan. I love it when a plan comes together. I think that is in the uh, dive plan. Yeah, end on this ridge thing. And what with that, it? it's and not a tubular. What'd you call it? Uh, spreading. It's an intrusive dike. Intrusive dike. Yeah, I couldn't remember the first word. Um, yeah, end on the intrusive dike that uh, sets us up for recovery heading. And with that chat, we are off the sea floor and into the blue water, leaving off at just about 1,900 meters. And we're at 190 samples for the cruise so far. Wow. I think What's 21 the to 22 record? will be the highest record speed. of sample. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh. That's something, a good question for Leela. Or Steve. Yeah, we've been using USB also. Do you need help? <laughs> um, I don't need to switch. No. The stickers are a one person job. Okay. We. In that hardened tube inside. But th this is actually, I think, an intrusive dike. Okay. I with, tried. With some tube stuff. Does Maybe. That's interesting. So uh, it's not a tube? I can't tell, but the, the the way it's so linear. Ooh, zoom in here, please. It looks a lot more like mushroom. a dike. Is it a mushroom? Yes. Yeah. It's a mushroom <laughs> coral. Was my explanation All right, thank of you. two probably? Yeah, you, you can see it. <coughs> Describe the tube appropriately. Well done, Steph. <laughs> I was learning yesterday. But this is very similar to that uh, dike feature we saw down in the saddle in our last dive. Yeah. I feel like this looks like the little rock walls you see all over Rhode yeah. Island. Yeah. <laughs> or Hadrian's Wall in uh, northern England. You Ooh. can keep your heading. Roger. That's I'm almost column or basalt, though. Almost? Set up for almost. Now. Yeah, you can see that below that intrusive there's like little almost look like uh column or basalt another one what forms these which one dike features it was, it was a uh, an intrusion there's probably a crack and the lavas came up along this crack wow that's impressive it was a great thing to end the dive on spongy debris graveyard yeah, it all like congregates at the base of this wall. And yeah, you can see the, the horizontal lines in that tube. That's almost like uh, columnar 
jointing. I mean, we're always Perfect. used to seeing it vertical, the joints, and but on these things, you know, I don't see them horizontal. Coming up. That's it. Thanks Coming for the up. show. Thank you. Thanks, Guillaume. That was a perfectly. What speed? We'll find out. Okay. I'm going to go full speed, and you can match for now. See how we go. Um, that was a perfectly angled feature to end on because that set me directly up for recovery heading. Yay. Love that. All part of the plan. I love it when a plan comes together. I think that is in the uh, dive plan. Yeah, end on this ridge thing. And what'd with you call that. It? It's not a tubular, what'd you call it? A, a, a spreading? It's an intrusive dike. Intrusive dike, yeah. I couldn't remember the first word. Um, yeah, end on the intrusive dike that uh, sets us up for recovery heading. And with that chat, we are off the sea floor and into the blue water, leaving off at just about 1,900 meters. And we're at 190 samples for the cruise so far. Wow. I think What's 21, the 22 will be the highest speed. record of sample. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh. That's something, a good question for Leela. Or Steve. Yeah, we've been using USB also. Do you need help? <laughs> um, I don't need to switch. <laughs> no. The stickers are a one person job. Okay. Which? Um, no. Let's see. Yeah, so we are currently off no, bottom all and we are coming up. So we we holding position here, and then um, approximate um, surface time is going to be ten minutes to nine, to to twelve rather. <laughs> so I was looking at that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, I just wrote the, the time down here, so and I and I use the UTC time. <laughs> Setting up Atalanta's tilt and lights. Blue water time. And you can kill auto heading too once you're ready. Roger, killing auto heading. It's a very nice watch. Mm. Sure, but nice. Yeah, the, the geography, ge geology, whatever yeah. the shapes geography. of the... Geography? Geography was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. Really cool wall. Overhangs and danger. Danger. I think it was a great dive overall. Yeah. We're full up on samples, aren't we? Yep. Very. Everything but the push cores. Not push cores though. Those yeah. are silly. <laughs> yeah, this area is not conducive to those things. Oh, it's easy to bring them down just in case. <laughs> it's a good trick for the back row if there's been a, a pilot that's pissed you off a little bit, then you can be like, yeah, can we take a push core here? Like, ah, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Threaten us with that. Be nice, otherwise I'll make you take a push core. <laughs> Do you want me to slow down a little, or are we good here? Yeah, please. Roger. 21 is probably the, the goal, the target.
Okay. Good job with the collection. Thank you. I think I can make 21. We'll see. Chat has a couple questions for us. What do we think of or fish? Would we ever want to see one? Of what fish? Or fish? That'd be pretty cool. They're pretty. They're very pretty fish. Yeah, that, that'd that be really cool. They're big, right? Yep. Very big. Like, I know some people feet. view them as bad luck because they'll sometimes wash up before uh, tsunamis or hurricanes. Mm -hmm. But hmm. since we're in the deep ocean, like this is their natural habitat, so I don't think we'd need to be worried. They can get 36 feet in length. Yeah. That would be Damn. so cool. How much is that in meters? Let me look it up. 10, 11 meters. Whoa. Yep, 11 meters. They can go to depths of um, a thousand meters, but are typically found at 200. Another question is, are the ROVs equipped to withstand certain bumps from unforeseen terrain, or are they very delicate? Oh, I run into stuff all the time. <laughs> bonk. If you guys, yeah, if you guys hear Trevor go bonk. It means I hit something. Yeah, they're pretty tough. We also rubberize the bumpy bits. Rubber baby, rubber baby buggy bumpers on it. <laughs> But seriously though, we often run into stuff on purpose. So we did that rock cliff sample where we grabbed a rock off the side of the cliff. So we used the bumper bar. Bump is in the name of it. It's got rubber and we drove straight into the cliff, nice and slow, but drove straight in and kept the thrusters pushing forward to give us a nice stable work platform on which to sample a rock. How far away from waypoint five would you say we ascended now? Uh, of course, it's the main one. Three seven five meters. Thank you. You're welcome. How long is our um, ascent estimated at? We're going to be at the handover point at 11.50, nice. 10 minutes before noon. Okay, here's a question. Um, 
A question for you on recovery. I've seen when you pull Atalanta out, you attach lines from the back of Nautilus, but how do you get the deck crane attached to the lift point on top of Herc as you don't put divers in the water? Great question. For what you do. I was wondering that for a long time too. Do you want to take that, Annabelle? Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie, was my explanation good for you? Uh, yeah, I understand now. Okay, Roger. <laughs> um, so there's there's the uh, there's a line that's attached to the lift bale on top of Herc, and that line is run a, like to the basically tied to the tether all the way to the back of Atalanta. Um, if anybody crochets, it, it's the same stitch as the chain, and it's this daisy chain like line that keeps everything neat and tied together on the tether, um, and then when Atalanta gets pulled out of the water, they can undo the daisy chain and grab that line, tie it to the crane, and the crane can pull in Herc from the lift bale using that line. I don't know, maybe, I hope that was an okay description. I think that's a good description. So the rope that they use to pull Herc with the crane is always attached to Herc. It goes underwater with Herc. that one for when for a little later yeah um, i was curious about your the answer you were giving the other time but like how far can the two movies get from um, from the ship yeah but you didn't like you didn't finish it oh um yeah herc can't really pull atalanta the only thing that gets as far away from the ship is streaming through the water and a lot of drag so if we're sitting in one space, one spot for an hour, we're going to be right underneath the ship unless the current's pushing us. But if we drive the ship ahead yeah. really fast, then yeah. they're going to swing back. That's pretty much mm -hmm. the only way you can move uh, far away from the ship is move the ship far away from you. Oh, I see. We got uh, some oarfish facts. A lot of old sailor stories of sea monsters are based on the oarfish. Um, they could weigh up to 600 pounds, and they often look snake-like with red fins. I think it would also be cool to see a mola mola. Mm -hmm. It would be cool to see any fish, really. That's true. Anything on blue water. Anything. Anything. <laughs> we, we've seen a lot of squids. Yeah. In blue water, some sharks. Annabelle, the chat says good description. They've been trying to figure out how Herc gets attached to the crane for ages. Awesome. Wireless. <laughs> Bluetooth crane. Bluetooth crane, yeah. When I was trying to figure out, I never, like, watched it happen on the deck or anything. So, like, I just sit and ponder what was happening. And I was like, do they have, like, a magnet that, like, finds it immediately? Or oh, do they have, like, cool. a grappling hook that, like, they shoot out in it? I was, like, really trying to figure it out. In order to work on deck, you have to be really strong and just pull it in with the tether. <laughs> <laughs> No, what Annabelle said, not what I said. I like the grappling hook idea. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool. You can really see the current direction now. Yep.
question for the, the bio team or the science team. Um, how are the samples handled when you get to the surface? Can you describe the process? Yeah, uh, we try to recover the samples as soon as possible because they are affected by the change of temperature. Oh. So we collect them and we put it in vials and in trays and uh, put it immediately in, in, the, in the refrigerator. And then we process them one by one uh, with the, anyone, uh, every of them with the spe special requested from the scientists. Uh, some of them require to be uh, in determined in different fixatives such as ethanol or formalin, depending on the on the researcher if they, if they are gonna perform molecular studies or morphological studies. It requires different fixatives. Uh, we also take pictures, measures, and, and yeah, and, uh, label everything properly because we have to keep track on, on the sample. So there is a lot of uh, metadata associated with, this, with all the samples. And yeah, this is basically what we, we are doing with the biological samples. Thank you. I thought there was another sample related question, but I don't know if there was. Um, I've been told to hype up. Hype up what? <laughs> to just hype up, no, oh. to hype up the um, upcoming dive and the fact that it is Herc's 1,000th dive from Nautilus. I think it, I think, well, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I think those numbers predate Nautilus. Wow. Because Herc predates Nautilus. As mm -hmm. in, the ship was around, obviously, but it wasn't part of OET. Herc did a few dives, not exactly sure how many, before they started the numbering system, and then they started the numbering system at a thousand. So it's going to be a thousandth dive since we started tracking. Um, I have been told the official word is a thousandth dive from Nautilus. Is that true? Okay. H2K! So, um, so yeah, so we're going to be doing that thousandth dive. Uh, later today, it's scheduled for, hopefully at around 8 p.m. Um, and so I'm trying to think of what to say. <laughs> Are we diving on the atoll? It's not certain yet, but that's uh, we're thinking about trying to do that. Wow. There's a previous uh, proposal to do that in the last couple of uh, cruises but we're uh, trying to make sure it's going to be okay. Okay with Prim or? Just with the powers that be. Oh. It's powerful. It's powerful. So we're planning some fun things for this dive. And one thing that we're planning is we want the world to tell us, um, you know, a fond memory that they have with Hercules um, watching our streams, whether it's, you know, Hercules and our streams and um, what you've seen down there has inspired something in your lives That's or has um, just made your day yeah, in some sort of way. Yeah, We'd love please. for you guys to put it in the chat. You can do it now, you can do it tomorrow during the dive or later tonight or tomorrow during the dive. Um, and we'll try to read them out and uh, post them, I think we might post them on a blog, but uh, we, we might not get to everyone, but um, we would love to hear how Herc's affected you in your life in a positive way. Yeah, and let's keep it just to the ROV Hercules. Yes, yes. <laughs> Instead of what? The Greek mythology Hercules, maybe? I don't know. Oh, I see. I thought you meant instead of ROV Argus or Atalanta. It's like, okay, well, fine. <laughs>
Um, they say fancy dress in the van for a thousandth dive. I'm gonna wear my best clothes. Yeah, <laughs> my, my cleanest t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> cleanest khaki shorts. I'm gonna put on fresh socks that day. <laughs> Ew. Thanks for that. <laughs> Aloha shirts. Oh, I wonder. Party hats? Ah, you're going too far. It doesn't work with the headsets. I'd wear a party hat over the headset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could also cut a little notch out that'll fit over the headband. A party toque? Yeah, you yeah, could. Yeah, a party toque. You can really just yeah. attach the party. I think party. I did bring a toque. <laughs> <laughs> I have a toque. We could just attach a party hat to the headset. Yeah, smart. Yeah. So we don't have to have that annoying elastic around our heads. That's part of the fun, though, snapping each other's chin strap. <laughs> I don't think that's fun. I, would, I, wear I don't think that's fun. I wear party hats like a headband, so it's like in the back of my head instead of like around my chin. Mm. Wait, where? Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's like a unicorn? Um, no. Headbands <laughs> around the back? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still in the top of my head. Yeah, but the, the elastic is behind your head. Yes, the oh. elastic yes, is behind. Like a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> what? What type of unicorns are you guys seeing? Those are the elastic bands behind their heads. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do, does anyone in the van want to share a a like core memory with with Hercules? Uh. Oh, <laughs> my core memory is not a good one. We'll skip mine. <laughs> okay. oh. A happy core memory. <laughs> Herc's longest dive. Yeah. <laughs> My very first cruise and Herc's longest dive. <laughs> a happy memory would be probably just the first time I saw Herc in person. Because um, Herc, well, Herc is a boy and Adelant is a girl, right? So Herc is, he was much bigger than I expected him to be. Very impressive piece of machinery. Anyone else have a memory? Yeah, share memories, people. Come on. <laughs> I knocked over a vent. Oh. <laughs> vent fact. Vent fact. Vent fact. Oops. Oops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to be putting the niskins into it, <laughs> like in the vent flow, but like you can't see anything. The arms across the face. They got no camera over the side, and in Atlanta cam, you can see the vent just topple over. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. It's about a a seven foot tall vent on top of a big platform, pinnacle, something, something, something. Anyway, everyone was making fun of me, which is fine. But the next day we <laughs> came back there, about 24 hours later, and it had already regrown a foot. Wow. Because we, of course, surveyed the damage and then saw how much it grew over the next day. It's like, wow, that grows really fast. So just like a, a starfish, it grows new feet. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a vent fact for you. <laughs> Yeah, not yeah. all vents grow at the same pace, yeah. but some grow really fast. And they look hard, but they're actually very soft when they're active and fresh. Harder further away from the hot flow. Because they're formed by that material precipitating out of the superheated mineral, mineral and metal rich water and interacting with the cold ambient seawater. This cruise has just all been good memories with Herc. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, my core memory is just right now because I've never <laughs> had any other experience. Yeah, I've never really had much alone time with Herc. So it's, you really haven't gotten to know him. <laughs> so you didn't get to date Herc? Like, you date your rocks? Herc is a boy, I've been told. <laughs> I didn't need that. I mean, just, you know, bro thing. <laughs> oh, that's not. That's, I was just correcting Stephanie. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> I think you said her. I don't know. Check out it's this. Uh, it's, we're, we're a little Check out this little I'm white little squishy confused. thing in the <laughs> camera. Wow, micro jellyfish. Bye. Um, I was also told that Herc is a boy. And Atalanta's the girl. Yeah, I think by... 
someone in the ROV team. That's right, yep. Someone in the chat said, I found Nautilus live feed last year and have to say it was one of the most interesting things I've seen on the internet. The way you interact with us and answer our random questions makes it feel like we're all involved. Aw. Aw, cute. Couldn't do it without you, chat. I feel like, I don't know, my favorite memory of Herc, I feel like memory is a weird thing to say because I've only really been working with Herc for this, this month, um, is just being able to work on the robot when it's on deck. Um, I mean, of course it's awesome, like piloting and everything, but it's just a privilege to be like, oh yeah, like, you know, go tighten up those whatevers and like, you know, being able to feel like there's some sort of, uh, like Herc is our robot, you know? Yeah, gotta look out for it. Yeah. Herc is a constantly evolving, ever changing platform. Uh, As to, are we all. To put things. Uh, oh, wow, that's deep. Oh, wow. <laughs> deep. Right. 200 meters. Um, and, and so it changes all the time. So every, you, you go away, in, in my case, you go away for a month or two, uh, and then you come back, and there's a whole different configuration. There's a new camera strapped on the front. There's, uh, you know, a, a different uh, set of, of uh, experiments on board or a, a so another sonar. Or uh, the coolest thing it was earlier this season when we had the uh, laser spectrometer, uh, which was strapped on the back of Herc and pointed straight down and shot lasers, pew, 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 lasers. <laughs> into, pew, pew, pew. into things on the seafloor <laughs> and did real-time spect, uh, spectrum, spec, spectral analysis, there you go, uh, of, of the results right there. Spectroscopy. And, uh, spectroscopy, there you go, thank you. Um, and that was cool. But there's, there's always something different. I mean, uh, you know, We've had different manipulator add-ons, squishy fingers, and uh, gosh, all kinds of all kinds of stuff. So it changes. And it is amazing the mass spectrometers. I remember early days of being entire rooms for the analysis. And now they can put them in a little box. I'm going to do a quick video swap here and let Panos uh, yep. come in for a bit. Roger. Someone else in the chat said, I found out about Nautilus Live by seeing the googly-eyed stubby squid video and the nice. yellow flapjack octopus. I've oops, moved down. Um, I've been hooked on watching dive since, just before the pandemic, and it got me through the pandemic. I really enjoyed when they put big googly eyes on Herc. <laughs> Did they put big googly eyes on him? I don't know. Probably. Sounds like something we would do. That they do exist on board, extra large googly eyes. Yeah. I've seen them in the data lab. <laughs> That's right, yeah. The like data lab is just being taken over by googly eyes. Hello, Hello. from Panos. Hello, Panos. How are you guys? Doing great. How are you? Good. You want me to say that? How was your watch? I think it was great. Nice. They a uh, chat asks, is it really weird seeing the robot you have touched and worked directly on, directly around, 
um, being a couple thousand meters down, or does it normalize it pretty quickly? Is it weird to like work on the robot and then see it down 3,000 meters? It's a good way to know what the scale of all the animals are. Like, if we're looking at Atalanta and we see the that Herc is... Wait, Annabelle, you're muted if you're trying to talk to us. Oh. Nope. No. Nope. I can hear her. She's on SPL. I can oh, hear wait, her now. No, it's not. It's my sound's off. Sound's <laughs> it's off. me again. Sound off. <laughs> okay, yeah. If, if you see, uh, like, Herc at the, when we're at the bottom through Atalanta, like, working on something, it's a great way to, like, figure out the scale of all the different creatures and corals and sponges and things. Um, I feel like otherwise we just wouldn't, like, I mean, we would know from the lasers, but, like, being able to see things next to Herc after having worked with Herc on deck really gives you a lot of perspective. Yeah, I mean, I had no perspective on how big things were down there other than the lasers, but those don't really help me because I don't really know what 10 centimeters looks like. Um, but then after like watching the wet lab sample processing happen and seeing these uh, slurp jars, now I kind of have a, a much better understanding of how big things are down there. Question, how far apart are the lasers? Good question. The lasers are 10 centimeters apart. Four inches. Oh, so we were talking about like what to call this thousandth dive and Maddie's calling it a meter marker. But if you're listening to this, what did we say before? A, a dival stone? Dival stone, I think that was what it Thanks. was, yeah. A dival stone. I mean, yeah, Dival Stone. I was thinking about Diviversary again, and does it have to do with years? Because anniversary is... Number of years. Number of years. Diviversary is number of dives. Mm, and is and year. And is year, yeah. Yeah, good point. Good point. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's but not an anniversary of dives because that's the number of years. No. It's a dive anniversary. It's a dive anniversary. It comes from dive instead of an, annual, and. But I think the point about it is that you're you're just thinking about the word anniversary when you say dive anniversary. So like. You are. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure other people were too. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Probably. Let's slow down to twenty-one or twenty, please. Or we're going. A little more. Give it a moment to catch up.
Is the slurp in slurp jar an acronym or is it just a funny name? Is it that the official name of the slurp jars? Is the slurp the official name of the slurp? slurp. Suction long up. I don't know. What? It, it is the official name. <laughs> the official name is suction jars, suction sampler, <laughs> suction jar rotate. Slurp's nickname. At least on the C log and on our log sheets, it's called slurp. Hmm. On C log, it's called slurp? Yep. Hmm. Yeah, no ROV stuff calls it slurp on our checklists or anything. That's because you guys aren't fun. Because we aren't clones? <laughs> fun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and we do a butt cam. Butt cam? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Atalanta and Herc both have a butt cam. I'm trying to figure out what, like, a, a little backronym for slurp. Suction. Oh, that's what you were doing. Yeah. I was like, what are you saying? <laughs> now I understand. <laughs> What's she doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just need a P, right? Well, we need the L as well. Section something. Yeah, the L, I, I got nothing. There aren't any words that start with L, so. Nope, there's none. No mm. words at all. No. Long. Section. Length. Suction length. Suction uh, little. Suction. Oh, suction of little underwater. Underwater. Suction of little underwater creatures for remote processing. No. Um, no. Sounds like a job for AI. <laughs> We're better than AI. Are we? <laughs> no. <laughs> recover process? No. Oh, to recover for processing. Oh, yeah. Suction. Suction for little underwater recover processing. <laughs> hmm. We're getting there. Suction. Oh, oh. Suction live underwater residues, possibly? Suction Suction. Live underwater real people. <laughs> <laughs> Suction. suction live underwater residents for processing. Oh, there we go. Mm. Residents, I don't know, like like residents no, of I like the deep one, sea. Yeah. Real thing. Yeah. Hmm. Suction loading. Oh wait, oh. no, you forgot the R. This person said suction loading uptake part. For recovery and recovery part. Recovery process. Recovery. Recovery part. Mm. Suction. I like the suction live underwater residents of, for processing. <laughs> That's my favorite so far, yeah. Can't believe you folks found a word that started with L. <laughs> <laughs> There's only a couple. Yeah. What about sampler of live underwater for recovery and processing? I don't know. No, I still like the little, the residence one. <laughs> uh, do you want me to slow down? Oh, no, nope. never mind. Here's another nice thing chat has said. I've been around for quite a few dives, and including including the recovery, the longest dive, and the vent falling over. I love the I love the way that Herc allows us to see things that no human has ever seen before in their natural setting, um, near real time, especially things like shy flapjack octopus. Did that person sign it? No. Who are you? <laughs> Show yourself. <laughs> This was written by Trevor. <laughs> I don't know what the flapjack thing is. It's the the little yellow Dumbo that um, like kind of 
covers its face with its tentacles. Oh, it's like that yeah. viral one. Shy. Someone said, if I ever won the lottery, this is exactly what I'd be funding. So many fascinating things waiting to be discovered in the deep. Nautilus Live is amazing, not just for... This thing keeps refreshing while I'm trying to read. Nautilus Live is amazing, not just for the science, but for the fun and passion that you hear from the team on watch. Goes to show how much fun science can be. Are we having fun or are we just going crazy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. Yeah, it depends on the time Why not of day. Both? Okay, no los dos. Do you speak Spanish as well, Trevor? Uh, no, I don't speak Spanish. Oh. You know what time it is? It's gauge, gauge check, check time. Gauge check. Para muy poco. Nice. Trevor, I think that was someone you know, but I'm not going to say their name. Cool. Oh. John Smith. Exactly. John Doe. Dave's back in video. Hey, Dave back in video. Oh yeah, hold on. Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. Golly gee. Gee willikers. What else is there? Good <laughs> gravy. <laughs> oh great heavens. <laughs> heavens to Betsy. <laughs> That's a good one. Gosh darn. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Jinkies. <laughs> Jinkies. Jinkies. Hey, the Zoinks. wire cam just turned into color. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> color of view. Look at that. Well, Why was it black and white before? Uh, last night I was doing a bunch of stuff trying to get the gain up uh, so that we could see it without the lights on. Yeah, nice. And I just remembered uh, in my pre-recovery checks here that I have to look at it, and but I put it back to where... Cool. Yeah. I noticed it was black and white, but I didn't really think about it. But yeah, that's, that's a great reason for it to be black and white. We were able to, as far as I'm aware, work with the A-frame lights off the whole night, so that was great. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have any intrusions. Stealth mode. Oops, that's wrong. Don't do that. We're at a depth of 950 meters. Oh, I can see the comps now. You can see the comps. The Atalanta comps. Oh, and you, so Zeus isn't, mini Zeus isn't blocking it? Yeah. 
And there's there's light. <laughs> right. If our streams had an opening theme song, what would it be? <laughs> Rock Lobster. <laughs> Ooh. I was thinking of like a Brady Bunch opening. Where we're all in our own little squares. <laughs> waving. Are we Imagine, like the, the intros where it shows each of our faces caught in the middle of an act. like <gasps> Yeah, <laughs> like a sitcom <laughs> opening. <laughs> Are we specifically talking about our watch? <laughs> Actually, yeah, what would our watch's uh, sitcom opening song be? I was I was thinking sort of like a Phineas and Ferb, like, 104 days of summer vacation type situation. <laughs> like, There's 104 meters or 1,004 meters of ocean exploration. That's pretty good. I like yeah. it. I wonder what our total vertical distance was for this dive from when we hit the seafloor to when we came off bottom. I could let you know. Um, our maximum depth was 1,914. Mm -hmm. 1,914 was the maximum? That's Mid. what. Yep. Hmm. Gauge check finished. Thing. <laughs> Elias, no, I, 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 I sense I, doubt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Maybe she meant minimum. The minimum depth? The, the maximum Rufana depth? Rufana is saying that the maximum was 1,000. 1914. Yeah, if, if you consider it's negative, yeah, it would be the maximum. Mm -hmm. The deepest yeah, we got yeah, was yeah, uh, right. deepest we got was 2,384. You have a nice little graph. The least deepest was 1911. We came off bottom at 1911, but we got to bottom at 2380, 2370 somewhere. Where do I find that graph? That, that that doesn't show the whole time on that. Yeah, you gotta no, you gotta it expand oh, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's about 500 meters, like vertical. Oh. More, than, more than that, wasn't it? Did I? How does math work? Hey, loading. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, 500 meters. Cool. Yeah, like there is this confusion with the sign, like especially when you are talking about there, like minimum and maximum, like <laughs> depending on how you think about it. Yeah, I think mini maximum depth is the deepest. Yeah, yeah. that's well, biggest Grifana's number. Well, Grifana's also only showing from the last hour. Oh yeah, you can change that at the top right of the screen. It says last yeah, hour. Just Be did. Nice. Now it says 2,413. Beauty. Yeah, I mean, there are different um, convention signs, like, but with, like, for us, it's uh, positive depth. Positive depth, depth yeah. Yeah, but some people like do the other one. Ooh. That's a mm. good one. Chad has a good theme song for us. Oh, yeah. Huh? Um, we built Shrimp City. We oh. built Shrimp City on rocks and... Corals. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sporals. Sporals. Rocks and sporals. It's still really like shrimps. the opening where you're caught in the middle of the act and turn yeah. towards the yeah. camera. Yeah. <laughs> you look a little bit guilty, but also like <laughs> owning it sometimes, too. Just me, me eating snacks. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I definitely get like shrimp posture in here. <laughs> I definitely get shrimp <laughs> posture. Shrimp posture, that's back. hilarious. <laughs> we are shrimp city. <laughs> So yeah, like, funny. look at the photos people have taken of the van, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you could look into those posture correctors that, like, pull your shoulders back, and you people wear oh. them in the office. What's that? It's That's a neat thing. There it goes. <laughs> it's gone. Come back. Nope. <laughs> I made it special. Special. Oh, I should. <laughs> uh, they said built shrimps built this city on rocks and atolls. That might have been the. That's good. Yeah. That someone wrote the whole song, and I 
the whole it. song yeah. into chat. They yeah. built Shrimp City. On this atoll is on what they On this heard. atoll. <laughs> yeah, it's, I saved it in the notes on the computer. I wonder if it was Steve. He did that with Roxanne and Roxanne. Roxanne. He said he'd <laughs> sing it for us on the transit back. <laughs> I love those kinds of songs. Mix up lyrics with the thing you're doing. I think it's so funny. I always do that with my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Is your cat a good lyricist? <laughs> no. I, I put her name into... Sometimes I'll replace every noun in a song with her name. Oh, good one. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Kia. Kia. Or Kui. Depending on if you need one or two syllables. Well, I usually just say Keeks or Kui. Because Akia is just, you know, not a Good. nickname. You want me to pretend? <laughs> no, what was that? Oh, it's night mode. You have to hold still about it. <laughs> Got some blurry, blurry Trevor images. There we go. Someone in the chat wrote, there we go. or asked, do you guys ever see nice. anything you can't explain? Yeah. Um, I, that <laughs> yeah I, 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 um, I looked to my left and looked to my right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I read this chat and can't explain it. <laughs> Normally, when I see something I can't explain, somebody else in the van can. That's so. true, yeah. That's most so of my experience. we have each other. <laughs> That's been great. But sometimes, like yesterday, before we looked up the species, before Paula found the species name for that coral sponge, that crunch, or... Squirrel. Yeah. What are we, squirrel? <laughs> no, <laughs> crunch. I Con think crunch. 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 You know, crunch. That one no. is the one we don't want. <laughs> but we didn't know what that was. We had only seen it, Steve had seen it on the East Pacific Rise Oop. near the Galapagos Rift, but never in this area of the ocean. I don't know how so it in deep sea exploration, you often run into things that people haven't seen before, which is pretty cool. It's what makes it so exciting. I'd really like to see a whale, though. Yeah. Not just the fall? Yeah, like a live whale. I've been um, in my head practicing what I'd say if I was the first one to see one. Well. It would be someone, something like, guys. A whale. Something along no. the lines of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in reality, it'd be like, ah, what's it? Fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, hey. Who? Me? Can Do you we have to look like we're life? working? Do we have to be serious? Put on my Frankie fa frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> Elias is paparazziing the van. Yeah. Are you taking a selfie? Yeah. I'll see. Can I'll I get see. in the background? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna leave the data. Leave the what? <laughs> leave the data cave? Did you say? The data cave. Yeah, you need to move closer to yeah. Oh, we can see you now. Yeah, nice. Cool. Nice. I got deep too. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, and I've spent all this time hiding over here. <laughs> You're all that. You better stop taking pictures before chat tells us to stop taking selfies and get back to work. <laughs> because this is a nice um, hard work selfie, right here. You know, somebody's got to do it. Hey, there's photo evidence right now of me pushing buttons. <laughs> That's what chat was telling us when we were, like, avoiding weather. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Just you, guys, you guys need to dive. <laughs> yeah. Just put them in the water. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> uh, uh. We were all, like, blowing in the breeze, hanging on <laughs> to, to parts of the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Kirk is not diving. Trust that there is good reason. <laughs> We're not just like, oh, I don't really feel like it today. 
Diving is fun. Diving all is of fun. Us would rather be we diving. were all really sad that we weren't diving <laughs> at the time. Oh no, chat, you told us too late. Chat said, make sure you sit up straight for the photo. Meanwhile, I'm shrimping over here. <laughs> We're all shrimping in the van. My the computer that I have to read the chat is like lower than my like eye line. So like I really do have to shrimp to like <laughs> see it. You, you set your chair your down chair, low, yeah. yeah. Set it to lounge mode. <coughs> oh. oh. Ah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so low to the ground. Wow. Maybe I don't have to shrimp anymore. Yeah, but now I can't see. I don't need to see. Win win. <laughs> <laughs> you have to choose one. <laughs> now the the front row is basically non existent to me. Yeah, we lounge right. Except too. when you lounge in. <laughs> Although should you be lounging while you're driving? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I should be. He'll get the extended handlebars too to do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Ape hangers. Put one arm out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Put your feet on the dashboard. Well, my oh. feet are up. You bet your boots. Low rider song playing in the background. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when you're driving down the highway and you pass a car and someone has like their bare foot sticking out the window. <laughs> that grosses me out. Yeah, why are you like showing your foot to the whole highway? <laughs> Wait, the driver or the passenger? <laughs> I've seen both. Both. Oh, no. The driver? I'm just impressed. Guess we're not driving a stick shift. Nope. I saw a video of someone doing that, and a guy in a motorcycle drove up and tickled it. That's Ew. Terrifying. I think I saw that, too. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you? No. Oh. No. <laughs> Stranger's feet. No, thank you. You're wearing gloves. There could be a fungus gloves. lab glove. <laughs> There's a lab gloves. <laughs> you grow up with the, the mean, full PPE. Motorcycle gloves. Come I keep on. those on me at all times. You never know. You never know when you got science <laughs> to do. So bottom floor there. Just get a little swab and a little a little petri dish. <laughs> I used to carry my portable microscope everywhere, but then the batteries ran out. That's an unsolvable problem, unfortunately. It is. Nerd watch. <laughs> the, the fan that I bought for my bunk, batteries ran out, and I. I've never used it since. Oh, no, no. It oh, ran well. out on, like, the second day I used it. I don't I don't think the batteries were full to begin with. We have batteries. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have rechargeables. Ooh. Oh, well, you're so prepared, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we need to start a GoFundMe for you. For more batteries? Well, yeah. the, the other issue is if I get the batteries, I need to hunt down a screwdriver. No I wonder where you can find that. <laughs> There's so much work. Yeah, tools, that's a, that's a whole yeah, other thing. Yeah, we don't have any tools on this ship. <laughs> Certainly not. It's five feet away from you. Right there. Hey, you're the closest one in the tool van to Yeah, but I have to, I have to, like, you know, just... Do it? Do it. Like, I have to <laughs> do it. I have to go it. and hunt down batteries and then hunt it, down the screwdriver at the same time. It didn't come with a USB adapter, though, huh? <clears throat> No. Your fan? Well, uh, the uh, Samantha found like an actual fan for me that plugs in, so I've been using that. But like the one I bought that I oh, okay. spent my my own money on. Um, Sad. I wanted the battery one because I didn't want to have to plug things in because we only have one plug in our room. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I I manage. We also have power strips and stuff too. <laughs> Well, that would have been nice to know like three weeks ago. You have to <laughs> say something. You have to ask. Yeah. And after birthing, we hooked people up with extension cord and I'll power make sure I'll tell the, the upcoming SCFs that that we have just about everything. You just need to ask. Uh, all bets are off at that point. So <laughs> that's a whole new crew, and they have to learn on their own. Otherwise, you know, they are just we take it to for be granted. Are each other? <laughs> Uh, the fan that Samantha found for you, is it pink? No, it's like a gray square. Oh, okay. It was in a box. Okay. I'm missing a pink fan. No, not pink. I had, I had My backup fan was a pink fan that uh, I loaned to somebody last time out and then uh, never got it back. So There's yeah. a thief on board. 
Who would steal? No, they're not on board <laughs> any longer. Speed I don't up a little. <laughs> there was a thief on board. A fan thief. Oh. Yeah. A thief. I'm sure it was an accident. Well, you can. I don't think I'm going to take my little battery-powered one home with me. You can have that if you want. Um. Yeah. 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 If you don't want it, leave it on board. We we'll always find. Something a hundred dollars, please. A hundred dollars. No. no if you 12. paid a hundred dollars for a fan and you didn't <laughs> yeah, get a, a US fan. and you didn't get a USB <laughs> cord for it, uh, no. No, you could have it. I don't think I'm gonna take it home. It would be a, annoying too. I collect up stuff like that. That's why I had a pink fan. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I belonged, you'd to, belonged to Tammy, and uh, I was keeping it in uh, custody for her for when she comes back. But now I'm in trouble. Well, this one's uh -oh. blue. And it clips onto things. Yeah, Which cool. Nice. If you were to leave the ship, Dave, and take everything you have on here with you, all the personal stuff, how many bags would it be? Two. Well, that's not bad. But my big, uh, big bags. I have a big uh, uh, Jansport backpack with a you know built-in pack frame and all. Huge. Right. Okay. Weighs 40 pounds when it's full of stuff. Oh, shrimp. Right. Uh, is it a big and one? then a uh, duffel bag to be named later. I don't have nope. the duffel bag on board. I'll bring it back on my last, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. On my last trip back. Nice. But when I walk off the ship this time, I'll have my computer bag and a backpack. Nice. Done. Carry them both on. That's how I did this. Coming here is just just carry on. Yeah, me too. I think I'm at a bag and a half. I don't think I'm at two full big bags. I. I collect stuff up too. Most of the thing I leave here over the winter, though. Most of the, like a, I leave about a half bag worth, a box worth. Yeah. Of stuff I don't need at home. Yeah. I got What are we gonna use a shelf organizer thing for at home? Nope. Don't need it. Right. Chat is asking, what's a good portable microscope you could use for backyard science? I'm gonna look up the one I bought. Um, just make sure you have batteries. It's usually a uh, digital or a optical. I don't know. As in, do you look at it through a phone or a computer, or oh, do you look at it through your eye hole? Through your eye hole. Okay. I think it began with a C. It was only like 20 Can you speed bucks up just a little bit, please? Um, on Amazon. Roger. Just a little bit. Just a scotch. Just a scotch faster. Just going between 20 and 21 instead of 19 and 20. Got a little too fast. That's great. Roger. Let's see if I can keep up. If you're wondering, chat, it was the Carson Micro Bright. Micro Bright. And it comes with a slide. Can you go down the slide? Is it a water slide? Yes. Cool. <laughs> Portable water slide. No, it's a microscope slide. Hmm. Makes more sense. Going to water slides next week. You are going on water Very slides cool. next week? Yeah. Where at? In uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Cool. Actually in Hayden, Idaho, which is north of Coeur d'Alene. Do you have a water slide vacation booked? Kind of. Cool. The, awesome. uh, the hotel where we stay has this giant water park attached to oh, okay. it. okay. Uh, and it's uh, about three quarters of a mile away from uh, my son's house and my granddaughter. Nice. Will you be going on the water slide? Uh, hopefully. There's a water slide connoisseur. Yeah, love water slides. And roller coasters, I remember. Oh, yeah, well, roller what's, coasters, too. So what's your favorite roller coaster? What's my favorite roller coaster? Oh, uh, good I'm question. A, I'm a huge Disney fan, so I like stuff at Disney parks. Uh, and uh, California Screamin' uh, at California Adventure, which now has a new name. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is now. They changed the name. Roller coaster's the same, though. It's got, a, uh, it's got an Immelman loop and a full loop in it. A full it's loop? So you like? Yep, all the way around. Sorry, I thought we were still looking at talking about water slides. Oh no! And I just <laughs> couldn't figure Mark it out. Marky asked about roller coasters. Yeah, I've tuned yeah. out for a minute. And, uh, yeah. Sorry. That one. Uh, the roller coaster at New York, New York, in uh, Vegas, is uh, is good. Uh, and Magic Mountain has a bunch of. Them. Uh, it's been a while since I was there, but I rode on every one when I was there last. I'm also a roller coaster fan. Cool. Yeah, but I've only, I've never been to 
Disney Land or Disney World or Universal Studios. I've only been to Canada's Wonderland <laughs> in Ontario, and that's our major theme park. Yeah. Um, we have big roller coasters there, and we also have the steepest drop in North America. It's like a 90 degree angle drop. It's called the Yukon Gold Rush. Wow. Nice. So, but my favorite roller coaster there is Leviathan because you're on it for like three minutes. It's so long. Wow. <laughs> uh, Disney parks are not known for the, th the thrill uh, of the roller coasters. They're a little more tame compared to uh, Universal Studios or Magic Mountain or Six Flags. Uh, I've been to Six Flags Atlanta and Six Flags... Uh, What's the one in the Bay Area? Um, Great America. A uh, couple of others. Uh, one near Milwaukee, north of Chicago. Anyway, they all have super thrill type roller coasters. Disney's more theme stuff, toned down a little bit, but still have, they still have some pretty good roller coasters. I think of like, sort of, I guess more thrilling rides at Disney I think of the uh, Ferris wheel, honestly, like with the sliding cars. That is fun, yeah. I've heard it referred to as uh, Mickey's death wheel. <laughs> like, <laughs> because people get in the sliding cars and don't know that they're sliding cars. And they just like drop down to the middle of the Ferris wheel. Yeah. So, what's, so what's a sliding car? What does that mean? So you know how it's like a wheel with spokes? Sure. It's every other spoke has a slider on it and the car is on the slider. So Whoa. as it tilts, the car slides up and down the sliders. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. Mickey's death wheel. <laughs> um, someone in the chat is going to Disneyland for the first time soon, and they're asking what attraction do you recommend? Oh my goodness, how much time do we have? Uh, <laughs> I'm a Disney uh, fan. Uh, have been going to Disneyland since 1972. Uh, average once every three years over that time. That's uh, what, 50 some years. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> these days it's more complex. You gotta get reservations and all of that kind of stuff. Um, whatever the latest version of the fast pass thing is, is usually worth it um, so that you can uh, not have to wait in line so much, but it costs extra money. Um, you have to evaluate for yourself whether to do that. Do not try and do everything all in one day. Uh, for Disneyland, I like, Disneyland includes California Adventure. I like four days, like a day in Disneyland, a day in California Adventure, a day park hopping back and forth, and just a fourth day to mop up and goof around and buy souvenirs. And What's the least kind of busy time of year? Wow, um, it, it used to be on the shoulder seasons, not in the summer and, and not uh, around the holidays, but in between those. Nowadays, um, uh, at least according to the four Disney apps that I have on my phone. Oh Mega fan over here. Oh that that clock, uh, daily clock the, the lines, uh, it's all crowdsourced uh, and people are uh, you know, saying, okay, it says, uh, it's a small world. Is the you know the wait is uh, is, nine, is 20 minutes, but it's really only about 15. You know things like that. Uh, so uh, the still the shoulder seasons, uh, spring and uh, and fall. I feel like in order to like go to Disneyland, you have to play some sort of 40 chess, like like going to Disneyland, like and planning out everything. Yeah. I don't. I've I've been to Disney World. I was too I'm like too I was too young to like really remember most of it, but like I don't know if I'm like if I like want to go to Disney. It's a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> Let's see. Not um, I I feel like for me it's it wouldn't be worth like the crowds and the amount of money people spend on it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's it's all personal preference. Yeah. You can uh, slow down a little bit again. I spent just like that. For 20, 21. I heard it can get really expensive, like... Yeah. Hi. My yeah. Um, mom's boyfriend's daughter, like, 
spent like a couple thousand on a trip. Wow. I'm sorry. But like only. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard people spending like ten grand for like. Ten a trip. grand on Disney. If you stay, you know, if you go to Disney World, stay on the property and stay there for a week. Um, yeah. But also, isn't like the the like the snacks and the food stuff very expensive? Yeah. And then like the the souvenirs are also priced up. Like it's yeah. just. And then you want to get the fast pass because you don't want to wait in like the hour long lines. Yep. And the fast pass prices for like most theme parks have gone up. Yep. I know Hershey, it's like an like more than a ticket. There used to not be a price for them. I only went once in middle school with my band, in like middle school band, but uh, they they were free. Like they just had like a little thing and you like take the ticket and then you right. come back later. There's only a certain amount of them. You had to be there at a certain time. And, yeah, yeah. And all of that kind of stuff, yeah. Uh, There's Disney. like a readout saying like when you were supposed to come yeah. back by. So, you know, Disney saw the, the value to people in that and then started charging for it. So. Yeah. When I went, it was part of um, Make-A-Wish. It was my Make-A-Wish wish. Nice. Um, if you're going to Disney for the first time, uh, look up Touring Plans. I believe it's touringplans.com. And that will give you a lot of good advice for the first time Disney thing, uh, visit. Thanks. And also give you, give you sample plans. This, someone said they're only going to do Disney for a day and Universal for a day. Uh, okay. Uh, what is the difference between Disney and Universal? Universal Studios is... About 40 miles. <laughs> <laughs> it can be for older crowds as well. Like you have the Harry Potter Boy, movies enough. at Universal Studios. You have like a Superman roller coaster, I think. And Disney has a lot of the like kids' cartoons and adult stuff as well, but the age range that they cater to is a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, think about Universal Studios movies? and like the things okay, that they yeah, produce, so we'll as opposed video. to like Disney right. movies. But both are uh, amusement. Parks. Both are amusement parks. Yeah. I would love we to go to control. Universal. I yeah. like Universal. I've been there a couple times. I really want to see the Harry Potter. Section. Yeah, and get some of the drinks. Are I, you a Harry Potter fan? Uh, not really. I think I was a little bit too young to be a part of the full craze, but I think I was into it. I, I think they're closing the down meets. the Hogsmeade Can we please area. secure really? tanks and yeah. have big fun? And I don't know. Every, every I think they already did it. I know Captain is no. on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, so if you're going to if you're going to do our to our chatter, uh, if you're going to do uh, Disneyland and California Adventure, because it's two separate parks, in one day. That's very ambitious and you'll miss a lot. Um, just a, a word of advice. Go to touringplans.com and look for the touring plan Dumbo or, day, Dumbo, Dumbo or Die in a Day. <laughs> and that will give you a one day Disneyland touring plan. Maximize your day. Dumbo or Die in a Day. I don't remember what my favorite roller coaster is, but I definitely have a least favorite, and that Triclops was... Triclops cam is off. Um, the Green Lantern Copy that. at Six Flags in New Jersey, um, because it was a standing roller coaster, and I got this feeling in my legs that they were going to, like, explode or implode or just, like, crush, um, and I remember thinking on the roller coaster, like, I need to ask them to let me off this ride, but then I realized you can't really get off of the ride mid-ride. <laughs> Yeah, once you're in, you're in. <laughs> yeah, it was really painful, though. Oh. Yeah. I hope at least it was short. I mean, yeah, it was roller coaster length. And other people love that ride. I don't know. Maybe it was, like, the way I was standing or something, or I was on, like, the edge. Seat. Seat. In quotes. I don't know. Hated that ride. There's a ride at Canada's Wonderland called the Wild Beast, and it's um, it's got those that strap that comes down over you, mm -hmm. but it's a wooden roller coaster. It's one of the older ones from the 80s, so it 
rolls around and like kind of shakes. Yeah. So it just bashes so you your just head like between <laughs> the two like a pinball machine. Why did they think of that? <laughs> Why did they do that? I haven't ridden that one in years because it's painful. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should, like, wear earmuffs or I something. Don't know. Even if you're, like, bracing your head against the back of the seat as hard as you can, you still get dinged. <laughs> <laughs> wear a helmet when you go on. <laughs> um, if you would have $10,000, in which go ahead, Bridge. thing do you spend... Um, Go ahead, Butch. I would invest it in S and P five hundred index funds. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably try to do something smart with it, but um, I would probably end up well, yeah, going thank you on so vacation. Much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Captain and Butch, thank you. I would do the same. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. But what, which kind of vacation? Uh, ex like a uh, nature, like national parks. I have a goal of hitting every national park by the time I die. Do you have the passport with the... I don't. I just mentally keep a note. <laughs> and I have stickers. Um, but we do have a question in the chat that I would like to answer before we continue our random conversation. They're asking, what's the best way to get a scientist to speak at your library? Um, you can get one of our scientists to speak at your library by doing a ship-to-shore interaction. So if you go on our website, nautiluslive.org, um, to the education tab, you'll see a um, section called Ship to Shore. It's a 30-minute interaction, a 30-minute live interaction with um, people on board the ship. So you can request a scientist, and then there'll be there's usually two people on those interactions: a scientist if you request it, and then a science communication fellow like myself. Um, we are doing expeditions until December, so if you don't catch us on our cruise, um, you have until December to um, schedule one. We could do it any time of day, so don't worry about time zones. Yep. And, and most universities are chock full of scientists, and they're often willing to, to speak at these sorts of places. All you have to do is, you know, if the university has an outreach program, you can reach out to them or, uh, you know, contact the scientists or if you know the uh, a parent who knows a scientist or something like that, it's often a, a good way to do that. Um, another question related to uh, diving and Nautilus is, how do you decide where to explore? Rob, you wanna answer that? Uh, well, I mean, uh, that's, we have a general region, the Johnson Atoll, that we're trying to explore. And so we're trying to pick different areas. You know, we, we reach out to scientists uh, to see what areas they're interested in and what sort of features they're interested in, what sort of samplings. And so we take that into account. And then we try to prioritize certain areas that uh, we can probably get to in a timely manner that have the right uh, depth characteristics, shape characteristics, uh, and actually haven't been explored. And then after that, we'll uh, sit down and decide uh, what features we want to go after, and then pick a location or part of the direction we want to try to dive on. Um, another question is, do you guys do you get to go on holidays or visit destinations nearby after your shifts? So, I mean, we're stuck on the boat for the shifts, for like the watches, but after the cruise, I know I'm staying in Hawaii for about a week, visiting some family I haven't seen in a decade or so. Um, and I, yeah, you're able to vacation, sightsee all you want after the cruise. Does our work help space exploration? It can, um, actually, if it's circling back to hydrothermal vents. <laughs> um, the reason, one of the reasons why people study bacteria at hydrothermal vents is because it contributes to the field of astrobiology, which is essentially looking for life on other planets, because there is a theory that life on Earth started at hydrothermal vents or in areas that are like hydrothermal vents, because they kind of replicate how volatile the conditions of the Earth at the time of its formation would have been. High pressure, high heat, darkness. 
Um, so by studying the bacteria that live and thrive down there, we may be able to find bacteria in other systems living and thriving where we would think they couldn't because it, to us it seems so hostile. Yep. And Trevor, are you available? But yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if it was the Okeanos, but there are some times where NASA or these sorts of groups like to use this sort of a model to test some of their instruments and rovers. Mm -hmm. So they actually come on board, you know, either, I'm not sure if it's on the Nautilus or on some of the other research vessels to do this sorts of work to see how their instruments will react because underwater is very similar response time and, and these sorts of things to outer space too for these sorts of uh, programs. The uh, laser spectrometer that I mentioned earlier uh, yep. is a NASA project. Yep. And uh, they it was the first time out of the lab uh, to use it. And so they were testing yep. everything for the first time. Uh, but the intent is to uh, to use it on uh, in, in space on another planet. Uh, their, their real dream is to go to uh, one of the uh, ice-covered uh, water planets uh, uh, like Enceladus uh, or something like that and, and go into a, uh, an ocean with, with uh, you know, on another planet, uh, a moon in that, in that case. That'd be spooky. Yeah. But that's their, uh, that's their ultimate goal. So I think it's almost time to close uh, close out the chat. Um, we're nearing 200 meters to the surface. We're leaving the twilight zone. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so chat, thank you for joining us today. Um, I can't stress enough that our next dive will be special. Um, it is Herc's 1,000th dive from Nautilus. Please put in um, any fond memories you have of watching Hercules, um, anything that inspired you, anything that lives in your mind um, from previous dives that you watched, or if this is your favorite time or your first time watching, um, you could just, you know put your feelings, positive feelings, um, and we might read them out loud or post them on a blog. We'll see what we can get to. Um, and yeah. Goodbye, chat. Bye, chat. Thank you. Paul, are you ready to see that giant squat lobster? I'm so excited about this. And you so need up this squat lobster, both. The one from the boot falls and the other one. I'm excited to see the piece of wood as well. Mm -hmm. With so many associate fauna. Me too. It's gonna be nice. Wonder if it's gonna smell. Well, that happens. Call all the smells and I don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> you sit next to me and don't complain, so. <laughs> That's because we're just being polite. At least to my face. <laughs> are you excited about the rocks, Rob? Rocks are rocks. Yeah, it's always good to see what, what they are. It's just always frustrating. You'd be like to be able to be down there and break the rock open while you're down there to see what it is. And you can't pick another one if you don't like it. <laughs>
Vaya. Deck control. We have a dead vehicle. Yeah, like, yeah, I want to change to, yeah. Of course. Deck control. Deck control. All stop on the winch. <laughs> 